Scientists in Hawaii and Homer, Alaska are trying to recreate an incomplete experiment related to all of this, made in 1769 on an expedition led by British Captain James Cook. The idea was to validate Sir Edmund Halley's methods of uh, Halley's Comet fame, I guess, for being able to calculate the Earth's distance from the Sun. Well, Ron DiULio is the leader of the expedition in Alaska and director of the University of North Texas Planetarium and Astronomy Laboratory. And I asked him uh, what it was like in Homer, Alaska. To be quite honest, the weather is perfect, I am, so, I am happy to say, and uh, we have been dodging clouds and chasing the shadow uh, for three days to pick a good spot, and it appears that we have picked the correct spot. Better than Oxford. Uh, correct. Okay, right. Now, what are you exactly are you going to be doing? We are going to uh, take technology, today's technology. We are going to be using some brand new uh, equipment from uh, telescope manufacturers and Canon cameras and, you, uh, and uh, providing uh, timings of when Venus first passes in front of the sun. Uh, and, but in, in uh, James Cook's day, he had to bring a grandfather clock along with him to get the time. And also, he had to, he only had the benefit of using a, a maritime sextant, which well, got them within a few minutes and a few miles. Now, with the beauty of this, uh, the new technology that we have now, we're going to be within uh, a few feet of where we are. We'll be very accurate there. We'll be very accurate when we take the pictures, and our and our collaborators and team members in Hawaii will be doing the same thing. And the difference between the times that we see the planet go in front of the sun will give us uh, a very accurate uh, baseline from which we can make a triangle. Then that triangle we will use to, uh, to calculate the distance to the sun using modern technology and to validate Sir Edmund Halley's uh, 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 prediction of the, of the distance of the astronomical unit, as we call it. Right, but, th th but that distance between the Earth and the sun is obviously already established to a very accurate degree, right? Absolutely it yeah. is. And so what we're doing is more the excitement and adventure that we are providing with our citizen astronomers, which is what, you know, uh, uh, Captain, uh, Captain Cook himself began as a welder and then learned to, the, his trade as a, as, a, as a sea captain. And uh, all of those that went on those 13-month journeys uh, were not necessarily professional astronomers. They were they were interested people. But what seems to me so striking is that Captain Cook doing it, you know, with no mobile phone, I mean, with no anything compared, you know, as you said, with a sextant or something, got it pretty closely right. I mean, they did incredibly well. Actually, they, they, they did very well. However, their only problem was an unexpected effect that is caused by our atmosphere, and that is what they call the black drop effect. So, and, and most probably, if it clears out uh, and for Oxford, they, they will also see it. It's, a, it's an effect of our atmosphere. Uh, what, a good example is, you know, when the sun sets, sometime you will see it kind of spread out, and you can't tell exactly that it's a disk. It looks like it's breaking, and that's kind of what it does because of the atmosphere. Do you think in 2117 there will be a professor from Texas in Homer, Alaska? I, I believe there will be, and in fact, I believe that that professor in Texas will probably not even have to use his phone. He will probably take his eyes and have some kind of recording device that he can plug into his skull and send you the information directly. <laughs> what a thought. That was uh, Professor Ron DeLulio from Texas University, but currently in Homer, Alaska, trying to mount that, uh, that experiment or experiment.